Well, now let's work on extending this fender into the door here. But first of all, now that we're at the side view, I can kind of see that I didn't really get this trunk in the right place. And this is why I try and do the easy parts up front so that because I'm doing them early in the process, I oftentimes don't do them correctly. And what I can do is just go back and fix this. But if I began with a part of the car that was more complex, it would be more complex to fix. So I'm just going to grab this and move it up and move this up. So it's just easier to fix the easy things rather than the hard things, the complex things. All right, let's take a look here. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. I might be able to pull this up a little bit more. Let's try that. There we go. Something like that. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Let's move on now. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the subdivision surface for just a moment again. And then what needs to happen is we need to extrude this down to here. And if we extrude it bit by bit, say just to here, and then shrink it down so it begins to angle down and then do it again and shrink it down and again, it would get a little tedious here. So what we can do is just take this and go all the way to this point and then shrink it down and then insert the edge loop. So let's hit E and Y and I'm gonna drag this back to here. And then once again with our active element enabled here, we can shift select this and then do that again. And now we can scale from this point. I'll press Alt Z to see through it and then S and Z. And let's scale down to about right here. There we go. Now that we've got that angle, we can go ahead and insert the edge loops. I'll press Control R and insert uh, five cuts here. That looks pretty good. That looks similar to the size of the other polygons. So I'll hit Enter two times to drop those in. And there we go. Now, one thing I didn't do and I may need to redo this, is I did not look at the angle here from the top. And we should probably do that. Let's go ahead and do that again. I'm going to press Control Z and go back to here. And this time, it looks like the angle's pretty good along here, but then it begins to really angle in toward the back of the car. So let's work on that now. I'll alt click this. And so we need to do two scales. We need to do a scale in the Z and a scale in the X here. So let's go back to the side view. E, extend this here like this. I'll hit the Y key to constrain it to the Y axis. Bring it back to here. Shift click this. S, Z and scale down here. Now let's go to the top view, and it looks like the interior here is okay. Let's shift click this and this again, and then let's scale in in the X, S, X, and bring this in like this. Let's try that. Maybe a little bit farther. We could also take a look at where this lands here. All right, I think that's pretty good. Now let's go back to the side view and let's take a look at adding those edge loops. Control R and I'll insert five again. And there we go. All right, so now we've got our top angling in. Let's take a look. And we've got the side here. Let's tab into edit mode and see if we can see any problems. Let's make sure it's smoothed. There we go. Now, right in here, it looks like there is kind of a problem. Just right here, maybe. Well, I think that's more just it changing from curve to straight. Let's uh, select it and go enable our subdivision surface. And yeah, that really takes care of it. That's good. Now, before we begin to move on back into the rear fender here, we've got some work to do because that's, once again, a very interesting collection of curves there. So we will work on that in just a bit. Let's take a look at connecting up or at least beginning to merge together the front fender and the hood. So to do that, I'm going to actually hide the main hood here and bring back the smoothing mesh. 
And I'm going to change this from plane to fender, just so we know what that is. Now, let's take a look at the smoothing mesh here and the fenders. I'll hit the tab key. And it looks like we've got more edges in the fender than we do in this hood part here. And that's understandable. We needed more for these curves than we did for the hood. But what I'd like to do is actually try and connect these up. So what I'm going to do first of all is with these two selected, I want to join them. But we need to make sure that the modifiers we have over here in the modifier stack are actually the same for each object. So if I select the fender, we've got a subdivision and a mirror. And if I select this, we've got a mirror and a subdivision. Now it should work fine, but I think what I'm going to do is just move this subdivision up like that. And that's a problem because since we're subdividing the mesh first and then applying the mirror, we're getting this artifact here. So I can take this down like this and put the subdivision on the bottom and that cleans that up, which then tells me that for the fender, I should take this subdivision and move it down below the mirror. So the order of the modifiers does make a difference. So now that we have those in order, let's select the fender, shift select this, the smoothing mesh for the hood, and then let's press Control J to join them together into one object. Control J. Now it's called smoothing mesh because we added the fender into the smoothing mesh, which is fine. We'll go ahead and leave that name. But now when we tab into edit mode, they both go into edit mode, but now they're all one object. All right, let's take a look at what we can do to connect these up. It seems to me that we're going to need an edge through here, right? Like through here, like this. We're going to need an edge through here, right? We're going to need one probably through here, maybe two. And then these two can hook up right here and right here. Right? So we've got these that can hook up. We've got these that can connect. And we've got these that can connect. And I think uh, now I'm not sure about this one here, if it's going to need to connect with this or if this is the one. But this particular area has a lot of unique changes in direction and stuff so we may not be able to understand what we need quite yet for this area so let's take a look at this and see what we can do i'm going to go ahead and turn off the subdivision surface for just a moment and for this one let's go ahead and add an edge loop right along here all right i could maybe take this and hit g two times and slide it so it's more in line there for this one Let's add an edge loop here. All right. For these, it appears we need two. Let's try it and see if it destroys the smoothness of our object. Hopefully it will not. Let's scroll the mouse wheel to get two. And there we go. And then it looks like this one here, G, slide just a bit, could line up with this one here. And then what let's do is come back to the subdivisions here. And remember, we've still got the viewport level at four for the smoothing mesh, and that's really what we want. Let's bring back the hood and see if there are any problems. I'm going to hide the smoothing mesh for just a moment, and it doesn't appear that there are really any problems by adding those edges to the smoothing part. And that's good. That's, that's what we want to see. Okay. So let's go back to the smoothing mesh. And now what we can do in the next video is begin connecting these up so we have a consistent mesh throughout this area.